what the Oh my gosh! <laughs> Alright guys, I'm gonna set up for the uh, hunt phase. I just want to thank everybody really quick for um, how much support uh, you guys have shown me. I can't believe how much um, just even posting in like a Facebook group that was absolutely amazing. So thank everybody who um, liked the video or even watched the video. Uh, I'm just extremely happy and I couldn't be more uh, humble for all. I did not expect to get as many views as I did. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much. I just wanted to start off with that because uh, you don't realize how much how important that is to me. So anyway, we're going to start the next uh, hunt phase. I just wanted to really quick just give a show how I track things. Um, there's a lot of things to track in this game and I try my best so I just wanted to sh give like a really quick view of how I try to do it um, so right here we're just gonna start so as you can see this is the gear layout for someone we're gonna be using I use the normal gear grid that comes with the game um, so th this is what um, Ollie will be wearing uh, throughout the fight this is the tank so we, we do have him with the stone noses the rawhide headband, the rawhide vest, the bone dagger, and the monster grease, just like I had said last in the settlement phase. So as you see here, I have a, a non-Kingdom Death uh, D10. It's a pink D10. See, it's got the zero on it. So this is just a regular old D10 you can use for Dungeons and & Dragons or whatever. Uh, White Wolf, whatever you'd want to be using a D10 for. Uh, other games have D10s. But the main important thing here is it's pink. Um, so... Kingdom Death comes with three different D10s. You have the red one, um, not to spoil it, but you'll see it, it comes with a red one. There's a meaning for that. There's a white one uh, that comes with the game. See, this is the Kingdom Death one. It's got the lantern on it. And then you get the black ones. So you have three different colors. You'll get one of these, one of these, and I, I don't know, an assortment six or whatever of the regular black D10s. Uh, now, you can never go out with more than four survivors. So what I normally do is sometimes when you're on a hunt event or something, you'll have to roll for, like, the person who's a straggler. Or there may be multiple times where you have to roll everybody at once to see if everybody gets hit. Now, in the videos, I've been rolling just one at a time just to get to my camera. But if you're ever playing by yourself uh, and you're not recording and you just want to just to speed it up, because hunts and showdowns, they can take a long time. So what I do is I assign each one of the four survivors a color, and then I know who it is I'm rolling for as I roll really quick. I'll just roll, look at the color that failed, look at the color that passed, see the color who's a straggler or whatever. So the game does come, at least the 1.5 does come with the three D10s, so that helps. And then if you just have another D10 lying around, you can just throw it into the mix and you're all good. That way, so this would be the uh, pink person, um, so I know is Ollie. This is very early in the game, so I only have one gear grid out. See, this is going to be Riley here, so I just take her survivor sheet and move these out of the way. And then I put them on the survivor sheet, and then I just keep the survivor sheet right here on the table, on the edge of the table. I have all four of them here. So, um, this I know is pink. And I have multiple pink dice. These are the Kingdom Death dice. Like These are the blue ones. I think these are like... Uh, it's the winter or whatever. I think these were Valentine's Day ones, but I've bought more of them. I'm not saying you have to do that, but I have. Um, and I buy them for if anybody ever plays with me, then I give everybody their own set of dice. But that's not necessary. But then, so say you get like a D10. Usually you can buy D10s in a group of 10 D10s is what it comes with. And then I'll just leave one of the colors on each sheet so I remember exactly which dice is who. And when I roll all of them at the same time, I'll just always make sure I'm rolling four dice to speed it up as fast as I can. So then, the other things here, so this is where I'm going to keep my tank, even though Ollie's sheet's not on camera right now. He doesn't have anything else, he's got no stats even. I know he'll gain one insanity and one uh, survival when, when we get to the showdown, if he survives the hunt from the stone noses. And then I do have the evasion to track, but I'll show you how I do it. So here's a regular character sheet that I, these are the ones, I printed these off, they might be smaller, but you get a pad, and I think these are roughly the same size. Mine are double-sided. I don't want to flip them over, but what I did was I found, I think even on Board Game Geek, there was a 
someone put put a PDF up where you could get four of these on one piece of paper. So I just printed them double sided, and then I just make eight per page because uh, you'll go through a lot of survivors. So anyway, as you can see here, this right here is the survival. I get tokens, these little gray tokens. These actually come from Puerto Rico. Um, they're the so I have like a whole bin here that I keep everything here in. Uh, all these things are just extra bits from Puerto Rico. So if you have that game, otherwise just get wooden cubes and then just bits or any kind of anything. You could even use pennies just to mark it, just as tokens for the survival. And then as I spend it, I just knock it off and spend it because you don't want to keep erasing and rewriting all the time. And even stuff that happens in the hunt is only temporary sometimes. Or stuff that happens in uh, a showdown is only temporary boosts and boons. So you, I just mark it with, with counters. So that's what these counters are. Everybody would have one and I just toss it away. And then I have leave the number because you can see there's still a one written there that is for just me knowing how much they'll have at the end of the hunt or how much they go out with, what the departing survivors get. So I know how much they have when they start because I'm not going to keep these tokens. I can't leave the game set up all the time. Now for the D6 here, this is I track insanity with this. Since this is the beginning of the game, I still use only the D6. As you can see here, I have D20s in my bin. Four D20s. Uh, D20s should be enough to track insanity, otherwise you can grab a D6. I have plenty of D6 stored here. So I usually track insanity just with a D20. Just, I mean, if you've ever played Magic, that's just something I do. That's what Magic, how they track their life. Because insanity can get quite high. Um, but normally with these D6s, again, just because I'm set up for the beginning of the game, I don't have very much insanity, if any. Um, normally I put these D6s on everybody's body location and I track their armor. So see right here, if I was tracking the tank, I'd give him one body. And I'd grab another D6 right here. And what is that, one head? There, that's how much I know now how much his armor is. So he's got one and one there. Now for the tracking the evasion here from the monster grease, I would just grab one of my counters and put it right here on the evasion boon there. Now I know I have a one evasion boon. If these were negative, so say this is why I have the other Puerto Rico ones here from the cubes. So uh, actually wait, no, these are Lords of Waterdeep. My bad. That's where I got these uh, cubes from. These were the Puerto Rico the little cubes. These are Lords of Waterdeep. So, say I want to put a light wound on somebody, I'll take a white cube and just put it here. Now I know that the body location, I'll take the dice away because he's lost all of his armor at this point. Now he's got a white body location wound. Put a black cube, now he's got a severe injury. And that's how I track it. So, um, what was this one insanity? This no one had. Um, so that's how I do it. Like I said, so this is I know is Ollie, and then if over here, so say this was Ollie's sheet, even though this is Riley. That's how I would know. I would just always, and I'd keep these D10s here, just on their sheet, because you have plenty in the game. You're never going to need to roll more than like five or six dice, um, and I just leave them on the sheet. That way, I can associate the color with the person. So, but like I said, this is Ollie over here. So. Um. All right, now, you know what? Well, I'm just going to keep this same thing here without moving the camera, but I do have to set up for the hunt. Um, as we can see, so Riley's going to use the bone axe. Aurora, she's going fist and tooth. Don't even need to show you her sheet. She's got nothing. She was the one with this one strength boon, or permanent strength she has. So she's going fist and tooth. We're going to try to get her fist and tooth master. Riley's going to try to get axe master. Uh, Ollie, this is him. He's going to be using the Bone Dagger. Uh, he's not at risk of leveling up anyway. He's only going to get one hunt experience, so it's not like I need to worry about making sure I hit with some other weapon or don't hit with some weapon. The, using a dagger on him right now, it's, I have no chance at, at aging up to get a um, weapon proficiency anyway. And then finally our other new survivor, uh, Clayton. He'll be using just the Founding Stone. So... Um, now, normally, I'll just keep the same camera. I have to, like I said, I have to set up for the hunt. I'm just going to keep it right here. So, we're going to be hunting a white lion today. Now, you get in the game, here's the hunt cards for the white lion. You'll get all these. So, we'll shuffle them up. I need to draw two of them. 
um, and I'll put them out on the hunt. And like I said, I'll cut away here once I set up for it, but I just wanted to make sure. You... So these are the hunt cards. You just randomly pick them. We'll take that one and that one. These will be the two we're going to get. I'll put these to the side here. Now with these, regular hunt events. Uh, again, to speed up the game, normally, if you look, they are all the same. There is no need to use these if you only have the base game. Even if you only have the base game and some expansions, there is no need to use these. I, I have like, I have every expansion except for um, the Slenderman and the Lonely Tree. So the Lonely Tree is the only one that I know of, of the actual expansions that comes with hunt events that you would need to actually use these. So if you're just looking to speed up the game and you don't want to use the Lonely Tree, you never need to use these. I will just leave them blank. So I would only put down these cards and the spaces that don't have one, I would just know to just roll a random hunt event. Now, uh, I know the hunt quarry and stuff can move around. So if that were to ever happen, you just lay down more cards. You just keep them off to the side and you just lay down more and you just leave the book open. Um, and you just go wherever there's an E in the book and you look at the hunt events. But for this game, I wanted to show you... Oh, there are these, so my mistake. It, the game comes with mineral gathering and um, herb gathering. So these, you never would shuffle into the uh, random event. You would just use them when you have certain weapons. So when we craft those weapons, I'll get into that. But here is what I am adding. Uh, I'm adding this event. So the Sword and the Stone. Um, it is a random hunt event. So we will shuffle it in to um, the car. Oh, I just noticed something. When I sleeve these, I sleeve this one backwards. So this is also a good note. So if you're using sleeved cards, make sure you sleeve all the cards exactly the same. Otherwise, I would have known which one this was. Not like I'd ever want to do that, but so you see the sleeve here has a little circle at the top. For all my other game, for all my other cards, I guess I put this sleeve on the inside of the card so all the backs of these cards don't have that little circle see all mistakenly I put the circle up in the top corner here so now this one matches now I'll never know so we'll just oops shuffle these up and we will randomly draw one and maybe we'll get that card that'd be great all right, those are the cards uh, today. Let me set up for the hunt event. And again, I do just want to really thank everyone for the support. I was really surprised at the amount that I got. Um, and that's just great. I do really like the Kingdom Death community. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I'd send that to thank everybody who does watch this. Um, and also today, I think I'm going to be trying a green screen during the recording. So hopefully... That'll work out. If not, <laughs> then you won't see it in the editing. Uh, so let me just set up for the hunt event. Now, as you can see here, we have our new survivors. Because we had Miles, who is afraid of the dark. He is never going to go out ever again. I mean, that is, that is just a debilitating disease in a world of darkness that is Kingdom Death. So, I mean, even... When he's at home, he's probably scared because I don't think there's even, there's not much light unless you're around the Lantern Horde. So, what an awful existence that Miles will be living for the rest of his life. Hopefully we can cure him of that fear. And then we also have uh, Wit, who, a little more, like, fared a little bit better from the last hunt than Miles did. He's only got the points one permanent accuracy. So we're just not taking him because he's not good. <laughs> so... He gets left behind. Um, so, we only had enough gear, really, to make for one person. So we've got Ollie here. Or no, this is actually Clayton. He's got our Bone Dagger. He's got our um, Rawhide equipment. He's going out. Now, we only have three spaces, so only three people are going to need to actually move on the hunt phase. So we've got... Uh, what did I say? This is going to be um, Clayton here, who is our tank. He's going to move right away. He'll be the first one to go out. 
because you know there is not the uh, the I'd rather have someone else die with all of our gear. There's a much larger chance you die on a random hunt event than a than a white lion hunt event. So the first two of our spaces are just white lion hunt events. So let's go ahead and we're going to draw this one which is the white lion cub for the oh, let me move Clayton here as our guys face down this white lion that we're now hunting. All right, so we've got the white lion uh, cub here. Uh, so the survivors find a white lion cub. They may choose to slay the cub. If they do, each survivor gains one random basic resource. The event revealer rolls on the table below. So this would be uh, Clayton rolling. So I think we're just obviously going to slay this cub as, as gruesome as that's going to be, but we really want those basic resources right away. Um, so we'll just hope that... Um, nothing happens <laughs> but we're not sparing the cub we definitely want those resources so here we go a five is going to be uh the far father lion shows up begin this showdown immediately well great i hope you like the new view for the hunt thing because now the hunt's over and i just did all that stuff to rearrange the camera but guess what let me rearrange the camera once again for showdown face. So let's draw our four basic resources. Um, I'll put this down, but we're starting to showdown right away. We're fighting the father after we got done slaying his cub. Good job, Clayton. Way to make an, way to make an entrance. I wonder if that hunt event would have been the new one, the sword and the stone. We'll never know. Here we go. We'll draw our four basic resources right now. See what we get. It's good that all four of us were there for this. Um, here we go. A monster organ, a monster bone, monster hide, and a monster hide. That is absolutely great that we got two hides. I can spread these out a little bit more. There. Great. Oh, I'm loving this. All right. Uh, I'll be right back once I... Oh, you know what? We can draw the terrain cards before I go. So I'll mark these down. We'll sweep these up. Let's draw our terrain. Where did I put the terrain deck? All right. So when you set up for the white lion for the first... Uh, for every time, he always is going to start with tall grass. Sorry, I was not expecting to start this right away. So normally I would have had this ready, but... Um, so there's the tall grass. This terrain's always going to be in play, so we'll have to set up the board with the tall grass. Then we'll draw two random terrain cards, and the setup rules are going to be on here, um, on each one of the cards. So what we will do is we got two tall grass. Here we go for the next. Let's draw. Oh, the nightmare tree. That'll be fun. And oops. Drop them. Didn't mean to do that. And let's see here. We'll take that one. And the top of the pillar. Alright. So I will set these up. These will be our three terrain for fighting the white lion. Alright guys. We're now set all up for the showdown. Um, I just wanted to do again an overview of the uh, what I was talking about in the beginning of the video. So... Again, this is how I have the tank set up. You can see I have his boons here for his one survival he can spend because we just arrived from the Stone Noses. He's got one insanity now. Uh, one chip represents the boon and evasion from Monster Grease. Uh, the black dice on the body and the head represent his armor. We'll just go down because I know I didn't scroll down to everybody else's. So this will be Riley. She's got the one survivor or one survival to spend. She's going to use a bone axe. She's got one insanity. Here is Aurora from last time. She also went out. She's going to have one survival, one insanity, one uh, strength. As you can see, it's just written there because that's permanent strength. And the boon from the evasion is the represented from the uh, the token, and it's from the monster grease. And then finally is the other new character, Ollie, who has nothing and he'll be using the Founding Stone. 
we will set up the White Lions deck here. I have all these sprayed out. These are all the basic. These are all the advanced. And you can see um, we have to build seven basic and three advanced for the White Lion level one. So these are all the basic ones. So we'll shuffle those up. These are all the advanced ones. We'll shuffle those up. And we'll draw. Seven of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three of the advanced. One, two, three. I'm going to put the, all of these here. Go over there. Take these, scoop them up, shuffle them up. And we'll, this is now building the White Lions AI deck. I can, as you can see, I already have the train set up on the board. Um, so we'll get that. I'm only going to do this this one time, then from now on, uh, I'm not going to show me doing this, but I just want to show it real quick and this is the hunt location or the hit location I mean we'll shuffle these up there now we're all ready flip this back to the basic action and these were the hunt events we don't need these anymore these are the hunt events we don't need those anymore and now we are all good all right we are now ready to start the hunt. So, as always, first thing you do is draw an AI card. First card this time will be Revenge. This will be last uh, survivor to wound, closest threat in field of view. So that's going to be the tank. We'll just move him right up. One, two, three, four, five. Right here. So that will be targeting Clayton with a two speed plus two accuracy. So we'll get two dice. It's a two speed, two plus accuracy. Now Clayton has one evasion, so that will be a three um, to hit. So that's two hits. And now this has an after damage effect which says the white lion isolates its prey. Full move the white lion away from all threats. Target suffers grab, which just means you place down, knock the, place the target knocked down in front of the monster. Target suffers one damage per monster level. So this is a monster at level one. So we will roll uh, to the waist and the body. So um, I actually forgot to put everybody's loincloths back on. So he has one waist, everybody has one waist, which I totally forgot to do. Um, so I'm adding that right now. Everybody's going to have one waist. One waist, one waist. All right, so uh, we can take the waist and the body just to knock. So Clayton will just go ahead and take those waist and body, so now he loses all his armor. Now he's going to be isolated, but we'll roll. So that'll be a white or a, a light wound in his waist location, which that would knock him down. Uh, so he's going to move away. So from here would be six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait. It would be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then he's knocked down here. All right, so that was the monster's turn. Put that in the discard pile. Next. So now the question becomes, should I use a survival to stand him up? Um, let's see who can actually get to the lion. One, two, three, four. 
five. Riley can do the nightmare tree. Maybe we should do that. Um, I don't think it's worth it right now, so we're not going to do that. One, two, three, four, five. No one can actually get to him. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. And then we'll just spend Ollie's. Oh no, he doesn't have survival. Um, I don't want to spend anybody's survival. He's going to stand up anyway. We'll just hope that this is in the close uh, target knockdown. Okay, let's draw the next AI card, which it was a knockdown target. It's the closest knockdown survivor in range, which would be uh, Clayton. So that's who's going to be targeted. It's a 1 speed with a 2 plus accuracy, so a 3 plus to hit Clayton. That's a hit. Um, we can just... We'll just spend his survival uh, to dodge the 1 hit, because that's fine. So now we've spent Clayton's 1 survival. He's going to dodge that hit, so this does nothing. Alright, that was the end of the next monster's phase, so now Clayton stands up. Alright. Now it is our turn properly. So what we will do is first we will go with Clayton, who's just going to attack outright with his three speed bone dagger, hitting on seven plus. Ah, uh, no perfect hits, but that's still two hits because he hits on seven plus. So we will draw the first to hit locations. So these two hit locations are a we'll do the one that reacts on a wound because he's not going to move he's just going to get basic action. So first the one on the wound so the dagger has a one strength the um, toughness of the white line level one is an eight so we will need sevens to hit. Okay, so that is a hit. Uh, so that's a wound. Now we're going to do the reaction to give one brain damage. One brain damage before the basic attack. Yeah, my bad. So one brain damage. So he had one insanity. Now he's got none. Now for the basic action, which is a speed two. Uh, accuracy going to be a 3 plus. So one hit. You can see that, but it's a one hit. Where is it going to go? To the waist, of course. To the waist. <laughs> oh my gosh! Of course to the waist. The only place he's been hit. So that's, okay. So what's going to happen here is now we're going to resolve the wound because that happened. Uh, I just had to finish performing everything else. So the wound occurs. So that's one damage to the white lion. But because he hit the waist now on the reaction, that knocked down Clayton. So Clayton's now knocked down, which cancels this hit. So, great. Just, just perfect. I'm really bad at rolling dice. All right. Well, at least we did one damage. All right. So now, let's move with... Let's move with Aurora first. Or we'll move with Riley first. One, two, three, four, five. No, she's not going to really get behind. Let's move with Aurora. One, two, three, four, five. To get behind him. Now, Aurora is attacking with just Fist and Tooth. So she has the one strength. So Fist and Tooth is a two speed, eight plus. So she's in the blind spot. So she'll be hitting for a seven plus. So that's one hit. Draw the hit location card. The reaction is on a wound. So we will roll. She's going to wound toughness eight. She has one strength. She's going to wound on a seven, which is a six. So she failed to wound. So the reaction does not take effect. Okay, that's right. That was um, Aurora. Now let's do Riley. One, two, three, four. She'll move here. 
Now Riley is using the Bone Axe, which is a two speed, hits on a six plus. So that's one hit. We draw the hit location. Ooh, strike at the monster's throat. Awesome. So this has three strength. So she's gonna be wounding on a five. Let's hope for a crit. That is a crit! Okay, now first off, we'll resolve what happens with Savage because I haven't talked about it before. So, with the first, we'll just do this before. I know there's other stuff on this card, but first, we'll just resolve S Savage. So, Savage, once per attack, if you critically wound, you cause one additional wound. Um, so, she's going to do two wounds here because she crit. Now, we will see what happens as a result of this crit. That's an 8. Um, yeah, I didn't mean to roll off camera because if it would have been a 10, that would have been awesome, but it wasn't. So it's an 8. That means the monster is knocked down. So we're going to do two wounds, and the monster is knocked down. So I'm going to do the AI card because last time I noticed in editing, I forgot to move an AI card at some point. So there's two. We've done three damage now. Okay, now the monster is knocked down. So when the monster is knocked down, we still have one person who has to go. So when a monster is knocked down, uh, at the start of the next monster turn, uh, they stand up. But, um, what is it? Rolls against accuracy. So I'll just move him in. One, two, three. So he's going to go here. Ollie's just going to go here. He's attacking with the Founding Stone. So when the monster is knocked down, so the Founding Stone has two speed, hits on a seven plus normally, but the monster is knocked down, everything is going to hit on a three plus. Of course. So one hit. We draw the hit location. If there would have been reaction, all reactions are canceled automatically when the monster is knocked down. Um... But there's none on here. So now he has no uh, one strength from the Founding Stone. So this is still only going to wound on a seven strength. Um, I, wanna make, I wonder if wound rolls. I think it's. Let me just double check real quick. If wound rolls also, in fact, um, hit when a monster is knocked down on a three. I don't think so. I think you still take into account the monster's toughness. Okay, so monsters is just the same. So it still need to hit on toughness. So toughness of six is actually a wound? No, because he's got eight toughness this time. So I need a seven. So he fails the wound. Okay. Failed to wound. So now at the start of the monsters, at the start of the next monster turn, all um, the monster just stands up. There we go. Monster just stands up. Uh, so they do. They do draw a card. Um, all right, we'll draw a card. Oh man, it's not too bad though. Um, if the monster has no wounds in the wound stack, discard lick wounds, but it does. So this is going to full move the white lion directly away from all survivors, turn to face the closest survivor, and heal one. So uh, we get to choose which way he's going to go. So he's definitely not going to go forward because that would trample uh, Clayton. We definitely don't want that. We don't want Aurora to be hurt. Is there a flow before he moves? If the monster has no wounds in the wound stack, discard lick wounds and draw an... Okay, so there is a flow um, to once I check that. So I could spend survival right now to uh, dash. Oh, I don't have dash. Never mind. I can't do anything. Um, all right, yep, so he's just going to full move away. So... Uh, if I had him run towards the tree, 
he would get stopped and at least we could attack him. So I'll have him do that. I'm gonna have him run towards the tree so at least we get stopped. But that's gonna trample Riley. I guess that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to hit Riley. Uh, it's gonna cause a collision. So when collision uh, takes place, when a uh, monster moves through a survivor, it causes a collision. Um, so what a collision does, it results in knockdown and then bash. So he's good. She, the monster's gonna move one, two, and then that's where Riley will get knocked down. Three, four, five, six. So now I just have to make her suffer bash to the feet, which is fine. She has no damage, so that's going to be a light wound on the feet for Riley. All right. And then I uh, return, so he heals one damage. It's to the bottom of the deck. So I just put that there because that was the one that was damaged. And then you return Lick Wounds to the top of the deck. So I'm just going to leave it face up so I know it's Lick Wounds. So, Riley took her one leg damage, which is a light damage. She's going to be knocked down until the start of the next Survivor's turn, unless I want to spend an action. Um, but Clayton will get up, however, because he was knocked down all last round. Or wait, but he knocked himself down. Oh, wait, but it wouldn't matter. He's knocked himself down on the survivor turn, then the monster went. Now it is the end of the monster's turn. All right, so now Clayton, he'll go first because we want to try to get some survival back. So one, two, three, four, five. Move him to here. He'll attack on the side with the bone dagger, which is three speed, hitting on uh, six plus. It's only one hit, which is fine. Don't want to draw the trap anyway. So this has no reactions on it. Now the dagger has one uh, strength, so it's going to wound on a seven plus. It's a failure to wound. All right, so Clayton has gone. Let's go with Aurora. One, two, three, four, five. She'll get herself in the blind spot. She's fist and toothing. That's two speed. She's going to hit on seven pluses because she's in the blind spot, so that's one hit. This has a failure reaction. Now she has plus one strength, toughness eight. She's going to wound on a seven. Uh, that is uh, critical because she's attacking again with a deadly weapon because that's fist and teeth. So she gets a plus one luck. So a nine is a critical for her. So this is a wound. The failure reaction does not take place. So a critical, the white lion vomits all over you. Uh, and it feels awesome. Gave one random basic resource and three insanity. So Aurora gets completely just vomited all over. Now I discard Lick Wounds. Goes into the top of the wound stack. Uh, she's going to gain a basic resource. So let's go with the basic resources. Now I put all the basic resources from the hunt event back in the deck. So they're all there to be taken. We will take that one. A monster hide. Now this I'm going to write down because I still want to be able to draw monster hide when I kill him for his four basics. So uh, monster hide, we have just one of those right now. So then this is going to go back into the deck because I know I'll be drawing more. I'll reshuffle. All right. <coughs> Now she critical wounded. I moved uh, lick wounds to the side. We are good. Uh, <coughs> now importantly, she did wound with her fist and tooth. Um, Riley also wounded with her axe. So uh, it's important to note that those two did wound with the weapons they want because they will be eligible to gain uh, weapon proficiency if they survive this fight. Um, Clayton wounding with the uh, dagger hasn't happened, but he can't Anyway, so the only thing that matters is Aurora and Riley both have wounded with their weapons of choice. Alright, now for Ollie, who can't really do much of anything. 
One, two, three, four. Oh, he could have moved there. Where was Aurora? Aurora was... One, two, three, four. Yeah, never mind. Um, hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. All right, let's... Two, three, four, five. We'll get him there. All right. Oh, yeah, Aurora gained three insanity. So she's at four insanity now. Awesome. All right, now it is the monster's turn. Monster will draw a I card. Power swat. Closest threat facing in range. Closest threat facing is nothing. No, he's and then closest threat in field of view, which is Clayton. Turn to face Clayton. And it is a one speed, which is great. Actually, two plus, but he's wearing. Um, Monster Grease, so it's Accuracy 3. That's a hit. Now this is going to do 2 damage. What the hell? Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay. Um, he's going to suffer knockback 6 if he survives. Alright. So the only place he had been wounded was the waist, and I keep rolling waist, so he's going to take two severe injuries. Here. Um, here we go, two severe injuries on the waist location. Number one. Okay. That's uh, survivable with a 10. Uh, waist injury 10 plus, belly up. Uh, the blow sends you sprawling and you are knocked down. Okay, that was going to happen anyway. Um, so he's not dead and nothing happened. A six. Major injury, or a severe injury, six. Destroyed genitals. Uh, you cannot be nominated for intimacy story event. This injury is permanent and can be recorded once. Game of random disorder. You are knocked down. Gazing upwards, you wonder at the futility of your struggle. Gain plus three insanity and one bleeding token. All right, so you're going to gain a bleeding token, Clayton. You're going to gain a random disorder. All right, let's gain a random disorder. Clayton, Clayton, let's go. Random disorder, that one. You're squeamish. You can't have to part with any stinky gear in your gear grid. Okay. He's squeamish. Uh, let's take a second to mark down everything terrible that just happened to Clayton. All right, Clayton, you're squeamish. So you can't depart with stinky gear. Uh, so you can't wear monster grease. Stinky gear, so squeamish. And you have destroyed genitals. Awesome. Okay, we'll take the squeamish, put it back in the disorders, shuffle back up. Okay. Now we'll resolve the knockback, because all these things resulted in knockback anyway. So let's resolve the knockback. Um, knockback six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. That's the end of the monster's turn. Riley stands up. Let's go with a ro oh, that's really bad because now I can't even go. Um, so the this is impassable terrain, the um, nightmare tree. So I can't even move to it. So I can't move through it. So he's got his back protected. So Aurora is going to have to just attack. Normally, just attack outright. That should be fun. All right, Aurora, fist and tooth, two speed. Oh, how much insanity did he gain? Three insanity. I gotta make sure. Write that down. Or not? We'll just take one of my dice. So three insanity. Right there for Clayton. All right. That's a one wound. Buzz it hits on eight plus. Or one hit, I mean. We'll draw a wound now. So this reaction's on a wound. She's gonna 
hit on a seven plus for the wound. That is a critical. Uh, so that cancels the wound on this card. She is just critting like insane. She knocked down the white lion again. No extra be resources time, but she knocked him down again. Okay, we'll take the hit. Aurora is just insane, insane nasty, just destroying this monster. Okay, knocked it down again with her fist and teeth. Um, now she can move. One, two, three, four. Well, one, two, three. She'll move there. Let's get Riley in there. One, two, three. Riley, bone axe, two speed, hitting on a three plus. She only hit once. All right, fuzzy groin, three strength. She wounds on a five. She missed. Oh my gosh. Okay, Ollie, gonna move in. Ollie. Founding Stone, two speed, hitting on a three plus. That is a perfect hit, as long along with an eight. Two hits. All these reactions are canceled. So come on, Ollie. You're just gonna roll twice, hitting on a wounding on a seven. Nothing, of course. Terrible rolls, like always. That's all I do is roll terribly. Okay, totally didn't capitalize on the monster being knocked down yet again. Monster draws an AI card and stands. Maul. This is just great. Victim of grab last round. There wasn't one. Closest knockdown survivor in range. Uh, he's Is he going to be in range? One, two, three, four, five, six. He is. Clayton. Going after the guy with the destroyed genitals. This lion. Uh, two plus. Uh, he's got the one evasion, so it's going to be a three. And this is probably going to kill him, but we'll hope not. Wow, he missed once. This is going to do three damage. Three damage to the head, head, head. To the feet. Three damage to the feet. This is going to be a severe injury. All right, so that puts a black cube on legs. Okay, that's going to be another severe injury roll. That's a six severe injury roll of a six. On the feet is torn Achilles tendon. Your leg cannot bear your weight. Until the end of the showdown, whenever you suffer light, heavy, or severe injury, you are also knocked down. Skip the next hunt and gain one bleeding token. All right, so he gains another bleeding token. And he's got a torn Achilles. You know what, we're not even, he's torn Achilles. Fun times. All right. <sighs> That's the end of the monster's turn. Now he stands up. Good for him. Way to go. Way to survive. Uh, let's go with your three speed dagger again. Let's see if we draw the trap and just kill you. S hitting on a seven plus. One hit. Maybe you can get a perfect hit. This is impervious. Is the bone dagger flail? It is not flail. Oh, it wouldn't matter anyway. So this is impervious. Can't wound here anyway. Uh, didn't get a perfect hit. Let's just see if we can get a wound. Didn't critical wound, so nothing happens. Would have wounded too. Good job. Good job. Um, now he can't. Sp I don't have any way of spending survival look through the hit deck because now would be a great time to do that. All right, I could just spend an action, but I already attack because I need survival to try to survive. Um, <laughs> one, two, three, four. Oh, he can get there? One, two, three, four, five. He can. Okay, Ollie, you're going to attack from the grass. With your founding stone, two speed, hitting on a seven. You missed twice. All right. 
one, two, three, four, five. Or one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we'll get him, get Riley there in the grass. One, two, three, four, five. Get her there. All right, now it's the monster's turn. Draw that AI. Vicious Claw, random survivor in range. Everybody is in range? One, two, three, four, three. everybody is in range. Random survivor in range. All right. As I was saying, when I have random survivor like this, uh, I take the one pink, one black, one red, and one white. And then I have them all assigned to, oh wait, I'll still need this. So, uh, Clayton, go ahead. You're black. Riley, red. Oh, got a tie. Clayton and Aurora. So it's not Aurora. Ollie. Oh, so it's Ollie. Ollie, you are being targeted, which is actually good. He's in the grass. All right. Um, what is it? A one, two speed. Hitting on a two plus. Or four plus. He hits twice because I have the two evasion boon for being in the grass. But so uh, he's going to gain two bleeding tokens and he's going to take two damage. It's a waste in the head. Well, he still had the waste and he's knocked down from now. The head, because there's no light injuries on the head, just the heavy injuries right away. So he's knocked down, but he doesn't die from it, which is good. All right, that's the end of that. Knocked down. Discard that AI card. Knocked down. He gains two bleeding tokens. So we'll put these two bleeding tokens on Ollie here. That's the end of the monster's turn. Okay, let's go back to Clayton, try to get some more survival, which would be great. So three speed, hitting on a seven plus. Nothing. Good job, Clayton. Okay, um, can Aurora get in there and make him knocked over again, or knocked out? One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Aurora, let's knock him down again. Aurora, with her... Fist and Tooth, 2 speed, hitting on 8+, plus. no damage. Riley, let's go Riley. You got 2 speed, hitting on 6+, plus. 1 hit. Draw the hit location. Please don't be the trap. Alright, this one has a failure. She's going to be wounding on 5s. That's a wound, so she did not fail. This does not take effect. That's a wound. That was the end of the hit or the end of the AI deck, so I gotta reshuffle. I think we have six six left, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Six hits left. All right, that was everyone's turn. Ollie is still knocked down, but at least he's in the grass. We will draw a new AI card. Maul. Oops, sorry. Victim of grab last round. No one was a victim of grab last round. Closest knockdown survivor in range. That's uh, Ollie boy there, knocked down in the grass. Going to be two speed, actually two plus, so it's going to be hitting on fours. He only got one hit. This is a miss because of the plus two evasion. So we got one hit. It's going to be damage three to the feet. Um, so it's going to gain one bleeding token, and he's going to be knocked down anyway. But the feet location is going to take three damage to that, which is going to be a severe injury. Severe injury to the feet. Four. Severe injury to the feet. Four, uh, dismembered leg. You lose a leg. You suffered minus two permanent movement. All right, Ollie, minus two movement. So he's moved to three now. Uh, you can no longer dash. Injury is permanent. 
And they gain a bleeding token. So he's going to gain two bleeding tokens because he gained one from the severe injury and now he's gaining one from the hit. So he's at four bleed tokens. He's going to die uh, next bleed token. What is this? He's got a dismembered leg. I'm not going to write that down because he might die. But I'll make note of the three movement. Okay. Uh, and then bash. Target. Yeah, he's knocked down anyway. So. Okay, all of that is done. Now he does stand because he was knocked down at the end of the last round. End of the monster's turn, he stands. Uh, let's go with Aurora moving here. Aurora with her two speed. Gonna knock this thing down again, hopefully with a fist of teeth. Two speed, accuracy, eight plus. She got a hit. And don't be the trap. Okay, this one's a failure. Reaction, uh, go. Uh, she failed. Okay, uh, monster roars triumphantly. Roll 1d10. On a four plus, the attack suffers one brain damage. So that is a four plus. Uh, per monster level and is knocked down. So she's gonna suffer one brain damage. She had four insanity, so she's down to three and she's knocked down. This is just going so bad. Now she's knocked down. Okay. Um, does it turn to face? Sorry, I, I want to read to make sure it doesn't turn to face her. Worst, no, it does not turn to face. That would have been great. Well, Ollie, let's just attack. Maybe this will be your final thing you ever do. Uh, two speed, hitting on seven plus. You got a perfect hit, Ollie. Good job. You gonna draw the trap? No trap. No reaction on this either. All right. Hitting on a seven plus or wounding on a. S oh my gosh! He got a critical. Critical wound. Uh, this ruins the monster's tenons or tendon. I mean, the monster is knocked down. Persistent injury. Ruptured teeth. When the white lion starts its movement, roll a one d ten. A result of one, the white lion is knocked down again. Wow. All right. This is really good, especially since I didn't go with Riley yet. Knock down. That's going to be one damage. All right. Now, let's go with... Well, should I go with Clay? I'm going to go with Clayton, just in case. You know, the trap's going to force him to move. I would rather... He suffered the trap. So should I go with Riley with the speed two, and then if she doesn't draw the trap, he most likely will because he's going to have a speed three dagger. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to attack with Riley first with her axe. She's got a speed two, going to hit on a three plus because he's knocked down. That is two. Would have been nice to get the perfect hit. So two, one, two. I did not draw the trap. Perfect. Now all these reactions are canceled. It's just amazing. The reflex would have happened no matter what. So she's got three strength. She's going to be wounding on a five. Let's go. Two wounds. That is two wounds. Two wounds. Great. He's only got three hits left. How did this terribleness turn out to be okay? Oh, good job, Riley. Now there's a chance that he could kill him. Now Riley's going to move, like I said, because I'm 100% expecting the trap, so she's just going to move there to get out of the way, into the grass. Or could she make it to this other one? Because he's going to move forward. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. She can. She's going to go here, because he's going to move forward with the trap. All right, three speed. Hitting on a three plus. Chances are I'm going to draw three cards, and one is going to be a trap. Oh my god, I got a perfect hit, too. All right, so that is three. Exactly what happened. First, we're going to resolve the perfect hit from the Bone Dagger. We're going to gain our plus one survival with the, with Clayton, which is amazing. Whew. All right, here we go. Three cards. One, two, there it is. Clever ploy. I'll draw out the third one anyway. Here you go. Just clever ploy. Doesn't matter. I knew that was going to happen. Okay, I'll leave that there because I'm going to have to reshuffle in a second. The attacker is caught in the White Lion's ruse. Is savagely mauled now, but he is knocked down. Does a knockdown survivor I for, or knockdown monster? Does the 
Yeah, he stands when a trap is drawn. All right. So, Monster is caught in the White Lion's ruse and is savagely mauled. Tacker is doomed, so he can't spend survival, which is fine, but he has one now, so he'll be able to dodge next round. Perform the basic action targeting the attacker. This is just this is just fine. He's the most Ugh. also turns his back for Aurora. Alright. Um, I'm just gonna gather up the hit location cards here. I'm just gonna shuffle this in there. Alright, here we go. Shuffly, shuffly, shuffly. Shuffly, shuffly, shuffly. Shuffly, 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 shuffly. All right, there we go. He's got three hits left. Now which was resolved is basic attack. Two speed, two plus accuracy. It's actually a three plus accuracy because of the monster grease on Clayton. One hit only. And that is, one hit is going to go to the hands. Perfect. Well, I mean, not perfect, but whatever. That's only a light wound. Light wound to the hands. Now, he's doomed um, till the start of the next monster's turn. The guy's doomed. So, now it is the monster's turn. He's no longer doomed. Let's draw the last AI card. So now, in the AI card, all we have is Maul. Maul is really bad. But I'm going to have to shuffle. But here's the other one. Revenge. Last survivor to wound in range. Um, which would be Riley, but I did get her to the grass. The thing that sucks is it's going to trample Clayton because I don't have dash. One, two, three, four, five. So that is going to get him to here. He's going to cause collision. As I said with collision last time, um, collision, the, the, they suffer collide. That means they're knocked down. And they suffer from bash, which is one damage per monster level, uh, to the body. He's going to suffer one hit to the body, which for Clayton is just a light wound right now. Light wound for Clayton for right now. It's fine. He's not dead. All right, now we'll do this. Two speed, hitting on a four because she's in the grass. Uh... Two, this is a miss, and then Riley has not spent any survival. She's spending it. Spends her survival. She's just dodging this other one. Awesome. Now I have to shuffle. All right, shuffly, shuffly, shuffly. He's only got three hits left. Shuffly, shuffly. Let's get rid of. Let's get rid of. Well, it'd be great to get rid of both of these, but let's get rid of uh, Maw if we could. Revenge is okay. Aurora stands up. Go knock him down, man. Knock him down. One, two, three, four, five. Let's knock him down. She's tagging fist and tooth. Two speed, hitting on eights. That's double one. Okay. That was that's double one. Okay, let's just forget that happened. That that didn't happen. Let's just forget that that happened. It's not a thing that happened. Uh that's just not a thing that happened. Okay. Two speed well. Yeah, let's attack with Riley first. Two speed. She's going to hit on six plus. She's got the axe. That's a perfect hit. So that's one hit. We draw the hit location. Fuzzy groin. There's no reaction. She's got a three strength. The monster's toughness of eight. Hitting on a five. That is a wound. Great. One more AI card down. Two hits left. We'll draw this. Okay, that was Riley. Uh, you know what? She's just going to move to here. And now I think he can get there. One, two, three, four, five. He can. So that'll let him, that'll let Ollie stay inside the grass. All right, Ollie. Let's get dangerous. Um, oh, he's only got three movement. One, two, three. He's only got three movement. Oh, I need to rethink that. He can't do anything. All right, he's going to go to here. Just stay in the grass. He's only got three movement. I forgot about that. Okay. Uh, that sucks. All right. Well, we removed the A card. This is the last AR card in the deck. It's going to be the monster's turn. Let's just go through it. It's revenge. 
Uh, it's going to target Aurora, uh, Riley again because she just wounded him. It's going to be the same exact thing. Two speed, hitting on a four plus. I'll move him in a second. That is a one hit. Uh, so it's going to cause two damage. Where does Riley get hit? Waste. Uh, waste. All right, that's a light wound for the waste because she still had her loin cloth. And where was the second one? To the body. That's a heavy wound for the body. All right, Riley. Let's heavy wound for the body. All right. Now, what happens after damage? A uh, lion isolates its prey. Full move lion away from all threats. And they suffer grab. Uh, one, two. Now that's where the attack was. Now full move away. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Uh, grab, she was already knocked down. Uh, grab is place survivor knocked down in front of the monster. Target suffers one damage per monster level. Two, the head. That will be just another um, black cube for red here. So now she is or for her head. All right. Well, that that's just going to happen every single time. It's the last one. So actually, revenge is really bad. Um, let's just get rid of revenge. Clayton stands up. It's the end of the monster's turn. This this guy can move three. One, two, three. Boy, that's super great, buddy. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, here we go. Here's what we're going to do. Clayton, you're spending your survival because you got that one. I was going to try to dodge with you, but from that perfect hit, spending the survival, you're going to encourage Riley to get up. Now, Riley is going to move. One, two, three, four, five. Behind the monster. She's got her two speed. With her bone axe, two speed hitting on a five plus. That's one hit. That would be great just to get rid of revenge. Let's just get rid of revenge. Oh man, there is a failure here. Okay, she's going to wound on a five. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Okay, what happens with this failure? Full move the monster forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits now out of range. Any survivors passed over, suffer grab. No one's in his way. One, two, three, four, five, six. <sighs> Revenge again on Riley because I'm just actually. We're throwing the Founding Stone. Ollie's going to throw his Founding Stone just to get rid of this revenge. Draw the hit location card. It's going to be an automatic crit on this. Um, here we go. Automatic crit rune. Suffers minus one permanent movement. So this is a permanent injury. Oh, you know what? I've been forgetting to roll to one to see if he wouldn't even move at all. Well, so we got rid of revenge, which is great. That's the end of the AI cards now. Um, because I didn't spend my action. We'll just say Ollie moved last. He only moved three anyway, which was one. So he's moving at one, two, three, and he throws his filing stone now. Now it's just basic attack. Um, which is a two speed, two accuracy. And it's always going to be the closest survivor in field of view. Which I can choose to target Clayton instead of Aurora. So Clayton will go ahead and gain another insanity, pushing into four. It doesn't say random in field of view. I'm going to move him like this. No. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, I'm going to move him like that. No. I am going to move him because he was here. I'm just going to have him back up like this. That way, uh, Ollie can actually attack with his fist and tooth now because Founding Stone spent. Founding Stone, gone. That's two Founding Stone we've already spent. That's not good. I usually like to bring them to like the dung beetle or something, but that's okay. Um, 
We'll have more weapons at the end of this. Uh, now he's going to do his basic action against Clayton. Two speed, hitting on a three plus. Clayton still has the, that's two hits. Still has the monster grease, but uh, body and feet, those both severe injuries for no body is now a heavy. So, whoops, body now becomes a heavy. That knocks him down. The legs already were. So he's knocked down again, and he's going to suffer for on the legs, severe injury of a three. Said another torn Achilles. Legs, three, bleeding. Gained two bleeding tokens. Not bad. That puts him at four bleeding tokens. You need five to die. <laughs> so Ollie has four bleeding tokens. Clayton has four bleeding tokens. We just got to do one damage. One damage is all we need here. We just got to do one damage. Aurora, let's go. Two speed. Fist and toothing it. Two speed. Seven plus because you're in the blind spot. That's one hit. Here we go. Hit location. The strange hand. Whew. Wow. If you critical, you have not spent your survival yet. If you critical here, you critical on a 9 or a 10. You wound on a 7. Wounding on a 7, critical on a 9 or a 10. Oh, it's a 3. It's a failure. Oh, the white lion turns around and does basic action. Oh. Basic action, two attack, two speed. Or two speed, plus two accuracy. That's uh, definitely two hits, a nine and a ten. Where are you going to get a hit, Aurora? At least you haven't been hit yet. Let's just not roll the same place twice. Let's not roll the same place twice. Okay. Uh, waist and feet only does one damage. You still had your loincloth. No, your feet, that's just a light. This is the first time you've been hit. Okay. Okay. Now she'll move. One, two, three, four. She'll just move to here. Ollie. One, two, three, or one, two. Whatever. One, two for you, Ollie. Can you kill this thing with your fist and teeth? Fist and tooth. Two speed. Eight accuracy. That's two hits. Oh my gosh, Ollie. You have no sort of strength, however. So we'll roll the first one, the one that has no reaction. No type of strength whatsoever. Uh, so you're just going to hit on an eight on the first one. It's a miss. Second one, hitting on an eight. You critical hit. Wow, you critical hit. That's amazing. So it's dead. And it gains one random uh, one random basic resource and three insanity. Ollie, you killed it, you madman, with your fist and teeth. So first we're going to gain that one basic resource from critting there. Whew. One basic resource from critting. One basic resource from critting. Here we go. Ha! Another monster hide. Awesome. So I have to write down two monster hide because I have to put it back into the deck because we're going to be drawing from the deck again. So the monster is dead. I can't believe that that happened. That was another really bad hunt. So, um, oh, here I'll show you the um, things in action here as I was talking about in the beginning of the video how it is I track things. So, as you can see here, there should be a loincloth here. I, I got to get them. But here's an example of the uh, sheets as I track them. See, black the black cubes, the insanity trackers. This is still the head location. This is his new insanity total. Insanity total, black cubes. Uh, insanities, black cubes. Bleeds, black cubes. His movement's now permanently three. All right, so there, as you can see that, I just wanted to give an example again. Uh, everything is 
killed here. So let's clean those up. Let's get this. All right, now, whew, we killed the level one uh, white line, which is absolutely awesome. So then you just go to the level one white line in the showdown book. So level one, uh, the first time you defeat the lion, you add the Katarium to your settlement locations. Awesome, I have it right here. So we'll be adding this to our settlement. Awesome. Uh, super excited about the Katarian. We definitely needed that. Now, as you go through the aftermath here, as it says, you victory, level one, you gain plus one hunt experience. So this is the way I do it. I don't know if it's correct, but I just do it exactly how it says. So first you gain one hunt experience. Clayton, you get a hunt experience. Ollie, you get a hunt experience. Aurora and Riley, you both get a hunt experience. Now that triggers age for Aurora and Riley. So, Riley will trigger her age up first. Now, if you look at age, the first thing that happens is you may now select a weapon type for your weapon proficiency. So, Riley is going to select Axe as her weapon type. Aurora is going to be Fist and Tooth. Looks right, it's down. All right, that's the first thing we do. Now we roll two d10. First up is Riley for her age. A 12. She gains a random fighting art. And now for Aurora, 12, random fighting art. So um, I don't have the fighting arts out right now, but I will get them. In the settlement phase so we'll know exactly what it is they get. So both of them are getting a random fighting art. That takes care of the hunt experience. Now you reward your weapon proficiency. So did she wound with an axe? She did. She gets what plus one weapon uh, proficiency. Did she wound with fist and tooth? She did. She gains one weapon proficiency. All right now you go to the rewards. Uh, I did that first. You get the Katarium. Then you get four basic and four white lion. So now basic Again, we will shuffle these up. We have gotten quite the haul for the first ever hunt. It, I mean, it's quite good for a settlement to get this, quite this big of a haul. Okay, one, Broken Lantern. Two, Monster Bone. Three, Monster Organ. Four, Monster Hide. There's our four basic resources. Now we get four White Lion resources. Alright, going with the four white line resources. Here we go. And we get BAM. Lion testes. White fur. Curious hand. When you gain this, a random survivor gets plus one insanity. And sinew. Random survivor gets plus one insanity. So, same thing. We take our dice. First one's first. Clayton as a seven. Riley is seven. Ty did the same thing happen last time I did this. Four for Aurora and then Ollie beat them both last time. Did not this time. So this was Clayton and Riley. Clayton a three. Riley nine. Riley you gain plus one insanity. Puts you at two. All right. Now all that's all spread out. That's the end of the hunt. Now we will return back to the settlement. Let me get the settlement phase set up. Here we go. Settlement's all set up. Um, look at all this goods, man. We got so many goods. So good. So what we're going to do here is... I, I, just to explain what happened. <laughs> These are from the critical wounds, the two hide. This is what we got from the uh, white lion itself. This is also white lion, the basic resources, and this is from the cub. So we got tons and tons and tons of resources for second year. Absolutely amazing. Now um, we will do the start of year two. Here we go. Or well, the, the settlement phase for year two. 
we're going to draw a random settlement event. Um, we're going to do this for, this is such a good idea, I learned this from watching uh, Hit Points Gaming, one, two, this is a fourth card, and it is Cracks in the Ground, oh, this is not a good one. All right, Cracks in the Ground, here it is, the settlement event. So, a low rumbling in the fills the settlement. Small cracks in the earth widen into fissures that belch up hot, foul-smelling vapor. So, we now roll a d10. We got a 5, 2 to 5. The returning survivor with lowest movement falls into the crack. They are dead. Well, all right, Ali is dead. Well, uh... Well, that's Ollie, and he's dead. Because he had three movement, because whatever. He's dead. Okay. And that's Kingdom Death. Welcome to Kingdom Death, everyone. Okay. And lingering effects. Cracks prevent all home endeavors and nightmare training or whatever. Awesome. Welcome to Kingdom Death. Ollie's dead. There he goes, dead. Congratulations, Ollie. Uh, who are you, Ollie? Oh, 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 oh. oh. Uh, I, don't, I think uh, now we have to actually look at this stupid card. So we set up survivors return. Heal returning survivors. Move tokens, not remove gear. Gain endeavors. So he did. We're gaining that endeavor. Then you update the timeline, and that's when it said do the settlement event. So we gain this endeavor. Screw you, Ollie. You made it back at least until you got eaten by the ground. All right, now, and this just makes the settlement phase a lot longer. All right, now we do endless screams. So, a scream pierces the silence around the settlement. It's probably Ollie falling to his death. Uh, so that's what it sounds like. This, this is the event that takes place after he falls and he just screams and you hear the echoing of him just dying. Uh, the screams pierce the silence around the settlement. As the noise phase, a chorus of horror rises up in answer. The settlement erupts into chaos, trying to comprehend the source of the terrible wear. It's Holly. We know the source. You may now hunt the screaming antelope. Add it to the quarry list on the settlement record sheet. Nominate a single survivor to stand amidst the madness. They gain plus one courage and become the voice of reason. So we're going to nominate a single survivor to become the voice of reason. Do they have to skip the next hunt? Uh, da, 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 da. There's a chance, so let's not nominate someone good. There's always a chance of bad. Don't nominate your good people. Does it have to be a returning survivor? No, it doesn't. Um, but I did not come up with other random names, so... Let's just pick who's the other bum from last time. Who's going to be the voice of reason? Uh, Wit? Miles is the one who can't do anything ever again. Wit is just the one who had to skip a hunt phase, right? Uh, I think I have somewhere he's on the back of one of these sheets. Ah, there he is. Wit. Oh yeah, he's got minus one permanent accuracy. Yeah, sure. Wit. Just in case you die. Hey guys, remember Wit from last episode? Remember how much he sucked? Well, let's see if he dies. Here we go. That's a two. Uh, Wit, the survivor face turns pale and the courage drains from their eyes. Without hesitation, the survivor turns on their heels and dashes for the darkness. Sadly, their foot catches a stone face and they fall face first into the floor. That sounds like about right for my guys in this settlement. They suck at just life in general. The survivor loses one courage and suffers. So he gained courage, then he lost it immediately. And he suffered the shattered head, severe head injury. Okay, what's shattered head, severe end head injury? Shattered jaw. Shattered jaw. You drink your meat through a straw. You can no longer consume or be affected by events requiring you to consume. You can no longer encourage. This injury is permanent. Okay, shattered jaw. Good job, wit. So you already sucked at life and you're just getting worse. What a just terrible existence you live. Shattered jaw. Awesome. Um... Could have got Orator of Death, but such is my playthrough. 
Remember how I said this might be a long series? Well, everyone sucks in my settlement. All right, so Wit's also now got a shattered jaw. Uh, what is he? Has he become the voice of reason? Yeah, he's the voice of reason. All right, we'll mark that down. All right, so that was the Endless Screams event. Good. I'm so glad that happened. All right, now we will do the, uh, that's everything, yep, we're everything. Now we'll do the fighting art, so I said I didn't draw, but, so first up, for a fighting art, are actual good humans, the ones who are actual good at life, fighting arts. Let's go, Riley, your fighting art is going to be, and yeah, lure epilepsy. Once per showdown, you may spend an action to give yourself a seizure. You <laughs> uh, uh, Good job, Riley. Your fighting art is lure epilepsy. Uh, I'm going to keep this because I said I might include the Gorm. There's a very high likelihood that I will, just to mix things up. So, lure epilepsy. Okay, Aurora. Can we please have someone who's good at their, like, existence? Can we please? That would be great. Please, can we have that? Aurora, would you please get a good fighting art? Here we go. And Pia. Ambidextrous. That's a pretty good one, I'm pretty sure. Ambidextrous. Oh, I could have put lure fighting, uh, lure epilepsy over here. So there's ambidextrous. And where's lure epilepsy? There's lure epilepsy. Alright, so uh, ambidextrous, all melee weapons in your geared uh, grid gain paired. Ambidextrous, oh man, that is a good fighting art, but it's not good for someone who uses fist and tooth. Oh, this ugh. oh man. Okay. Great. Let me just write down ambidextrous. Two huge wastes of fighting arts. Okay. Um, now we continue on. Now we've done the. F now we're all caught up. Now let's quickly go over what we're going to do for our settlement phase. So we're going to spend one endeavor. To innovate, which costs us an endeavor, we're going to spend this just right here. A hide, a bone, and an organ. And these are all basic, so we're just going to put these right back in the basic resources. And we spent our one endeavor. We now innovate. Innovate. We only have language, but let's draw two of these. And we keep one. Let's not suck at this as well. <laughs> Havel. Oh. And huh. drums. So obviously hobble, I'm pretty sure, right? Don't see how there could be anything other than taking hobble that would benefit at all, even though we can't do it because of this stupid settlement event. Yeah, prevents all home endeavors. Well, uh, departing survivors gain plus one. Man, I really do want Rhythm Chaser and Synchronized Strike, though. But we really need a way to get the departing survivors some survival. So we will take Hobble. Hobble. Let's just put it over here. So our survival limit goes up one. We'll mark that. We are now survival limit three. And departing to survivors. Gain one survival just for departing now. So that's great. That. This is now added with our language. Now I have to add the home uh, or the hobble consequences, but I'll do that for the next time. I'm not going to do that now. Um, you know what? Let's also just update the death count and do the death uh, thing too. So we have our first death, so we'll do that. Update death count. One. Death. Ollie. Done. X'd off. Ollie. Dead. How would you like to be erased? 
No? Too bad. Getting erased. That brings our population down to 11. All right. Great. Let's do the uh, death event. First death. Principal death. Yeah, first death, first death. A, B, C, D, E. First, first death, or principal death is what I'm looking for, not first death. Principal death. Phoenix feather, principal conviction, principal death. All right. Someone decides, uh, the group must decide what to do with their first survivor corpse. Well, Ellie fell into the ground, so let's make a grave for him. Someone decides to build a small monument to mark their loss to Ollie. How you will be missed. You're a disappointment when you were born. A disappointment on that hunt. Oh wait, no, he killed it. Good job. I forgot. Some of games the death principle graves. So we will go to the innovations. Let's grab death principle graves. So death principle graves. Uh, where are you, death principle graves? Graves. Here we are. Bam. All survivors gain plus one understanding. When a survivor dies during the hunt or the showdown phase, gain two endeavors. When a survivor dies during the settlement phase, gain one endeavor. Great. So we have graves. Put those over there. Okay these over here. So we have graves and mark that. What's our principal death? First time. Oh, the first death ever was Ollie. Oh, let me build a grave. So sentimental. All right. Um, adding it to the roll of d10. Let's go. A nine. Be something good. Nominate a survivor with tears in their eyes. The survivor takes a shard of rock from the grave and marks, them, uh, marks themselves with it. They cherish this mark forever. The survivor gains plus one permanent luck. Are you kidding me? Of course that's going to be Aurora. Of course. Fist and Toothmaster with plus one luck. It's really good. So, should I do that, though, or should I give it to someone else? Hmm, I really would like to give that to the person who uses a bow. <sighs> Let's see. Let's give that to the person who uses a bow. Who's going to be using a bow? Well, uh, we're just going to mark him down as bow guy. Who's going to have plus one luck? Could be bow guy or bow girl. We made two guys this time. Let's make a bow girl. Uh, okay. Bow girl. She's going to have plus one luck. She's going to erase Ollie's name off this sheet right here because he didn't have anything to his name anyway. Um, mark off his hunt experience. Yeah, this is just like a new sheet now. So whoever this is is going to have plus one luck. And we'll think of a name for her in a minute. So good job, Bow Girl. She was the one with the grave mark. Um, in editing, I'll have a name for her in editing. So I don't know what it is now. She'll have a, a name though. All right. That's the end of the death principle's death. Um, this graves is not an innovation, correct? No, it's not. So now we have two innovations. We have language and home, or hobble, I mean. So i got to mark that. Okay. Good. Can we finally start doing something now with all this randomness happening? I think so. I'll mark the screaming antelope, too. Okay. I think we're finally ready to continue moving on. All right. Now with all that said, all that done, here we go. Let's start spending our actual resources doing what it is we actually want to do, and that's play the game. Okay. So, here we go. We're going to... First things first, from last time we saved the cat eye, and now we're making the cat eye circlet. 
So we're spending our cat eye, making the cat eye circlet. That's first things first. So we'll mark that off. We'll go right to the catarium. Make the cat eye circlet. Awesome. So we made cat eye circlet. Next, what we will make is we will just go ahead and finish off the rawhide set. Spending one hide, two hide, three hide in the process. And we make a rawhide boot, rawhide glove, and rawhide pants. So whatever uh, survivor we decide that will be the tank, he now has the full rawhide armor set. So there's the full rawhide armor set. Good for that person, whoever that decides to be. We'll just go ahead and put this right over here. Like that, like that, and like that. Awesome. That makes one complete full rawhide set. So that gives plus one to all hit locations. And when you perform a survival action, roll in D10. On a result of a six plus, you gain back the survival that you spent. Awesome. Gotta love the rawhide armor set. Perfect. Now that we're still talking about the rawhide armor set, since that was only for one person, let's start gearing up a second person. We will spend three more hide, which would be this curious hand, this regular old monster hide, and this white lion fur. So that's three more hide. So the curious hand does both. Three more hide, and we will get ourselves a another rawhide vest, another rawhide headband, and rawhide gloves. All right, that's awesome for whoever it is who wanted uh, that stuff. So that will go on another survivor. Perfect for them. Now, the next thing we shall do is we will spend a uh, we need another weapon since we threw a founding stone so let's look here at the bone smith let's get another bone axe which is a bone and an organ so we're going to spend these lion testes and this bone here lion testes and a regular old bone get ourselves another bone axe and then what do we have left? Then we've got, oh, this will go over here. Now we've got a broken lantern, which we had one last time. We're going to save another one this time. So we've got one organ, two organs. So what can we do with two organs? Well, let's just spend this sinew and make another monster grease. That's the third monster grease. Now we have monster grease on all the people who need to have it, except for one person, because you can't get four. So, now one last organ. Now, with this last one, we shall spend a cloth, which is, so we'll spend this organ, regular monster organ, and a cloth. Now when you spend an organ and a cloth together, you can make a promo card, which comes in Oh no, I can't make this. That's right, because I need paint. So I can't make the Tabard, but I was going to make a Tabard, but I can't. Um, I need paint. That's right, I was basing that off of if I drew paint or not from the Innovation deck, and I didn't. So I was going to make the Tabard here. That's what a Tabard is, but I can't. That would have been great to have, but can't, so we'll just remain with our waste armor, just the real old cloth. So, now, um, so that leaves us with one organ. I think we'll just save it till next time. There's nothing I can really think to do with it right now. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna end the settlement phase with a second, with one organ and a second broken lantern. So that's two broken lanterns and one just regular old organ. Put this back in the basic resource deck. Now, um, might as well 
look to spend some endeavors. What's going on with the cracks in the ground here? Nothing good. Nothing good with cracks in the ground. Okay. So I guess I could just spend some endeavors. Should we try to do intimacy? I guess we should do intimacy. Um, that would be great. I know I'd rather want to just trigger it. Okay, so we're going to do organ grinder. We're just going to try to do one thing of intimacy it would be great to have. So, first things first. Riley, you're going to do the organ grinder. So what we're looking for is pretty much five. That's good, I guess. I don't know. Survival. What's my survival limit? Three now, right? All right, so she gains one survival. Okay. Aurora. What's your roll? A two. I think you gained an understanding. We lose that organ. And Aurora gains one understanding. That's fine. Lose an organ, gain an understanding. And finally, Clayton. You'll spend your endeavor. Uh, do I want Clayton to do this? Uh, hmm. I think I'd rather just have Riley. Can I? I think you can only do it. No, it doesn't say you can only do it once. I'll just have Riley do it again because I'd rather her get the understanding, or the survival. Clayton's not going out. She gets an understanding. What a waste of my endeavors. I should just build stone noses. Uh, nah, so she'll get the understanding. Riley, understanding. All right. So now the question becomes, do we want to fight another white lion? I don't think so. Um... I think, I think we're going to fight uh, the Flower Knight, I think, and get that bow, because we just got that plus one luck um, for bow person, <laughs> who doesn't, who is not named yet. I think that's what we're going to do, um, but we'll find out in the next episode, but I think that's where we're going. I think we're going to fight the Flower Knight the next episode. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. This was a little bit longer of one, but I hope it was still entertaining. Again, I really do want to thank everybody from the, from the Facebook group. So just everybody in general who uh, likes the videos. I was not expecting as much support as I got. So I will see you the next time when we're fighting the Flower Knight. Thank you very much.